Right now at 5, a bill advancing through the Oklahoma House would ban emergency contraception. And we've got ourselves another very spring-like day. Sunny skies initially, then we'll see some clouds later. We'll talk about that in that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. Plus, we'll hear from a Missouri Southern professor about election concerns surrounding artificial intelligence. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. The time now is 5 a.m. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. I'm Chris Warner, so it is Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Oh, no, it's no longer Monday. It's always a good thing. It is, and it's getting warmer, right? It is. Right. March isn't here officially until next Friday, but, boy, it's going to feel like it got here today. And we did see a couple of stray showers yesterday. Okay. It literally sprinkled for about three minutes at my house yesterday in Joplin and it was a light sprinkle. It barely even showed up on the cars. You had Perfect. to like look for it. So, but that's going to change. We do have some better rain chances on the way later this week. Let's talk about today though. Quick look outside at our camera from the Cornell complex on top of the uh, so it's on top of the Cornell complex. It's in downtown Joplin. We're going to show it to you any second. Now there it is. See, it's like magic. I say the word and then it appears and it's not really magic. You see, it's James. James is magic. He has the magic finger and he presses the magic button and then magic happens and it's TV magic. And this is a great shot. We've got clear skies. It's another chilly start out there, but we are still for most of us technically above average. I forgot to set this again, but we'll, we'll take a look at all the MoDOT cameras around the metro area and all of them looking pretty good and uh, not a bad start to the day. Temperatures that temperature anomaly from yesterday, like it corrects itself. That's why it's hard to track down what causes it because then it suddenly fixes itself. And as you can see, it's fine now. We're into the mid upper 20s and even some low to mid 30s out there. So a bit of a wide variety on those temperatures. Kids back in school today. Time to wake up, get on the bus and bundle up a bit. We're talking mid 30s, south breeze 5 to 10, mostly clear skies when they get on the bus. We're going to be partly cloudy. Clouds gradually increasing today when they come home. But look at that, 65 degrees when that bus brings them home with a southwest breeze at 5 to 10. We are looking at highs mid, even upper 60s out there across the area. And again, as we head through the afternoon and into the evening, clouds will gradually increase. We'll start to go mostly cloudy out there ahead of a relatively cloudy Wednesday. And then we've got some changes on the way. And we'll talk about that and those rain chances in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Caitlin. Thanks, Chris. In today's top story, police arrest a Florida man suspected of election fraud in Kansas. Authorities say 30 year old George Andrews of Dade City, Florida, forged signatures on a petition to make the organization referred to as no labels an officially recognized political party in Kansas. Andrews is charged with two counts of election perjury and 28 counts of election forgery. He was arrested in Florida on February 10th and is awaiting extradition to Kansas. Oklahoma lawmakers are advancing a bill that would ban emergency contraception and create a database of people who have had an abortion. A state house committee last week advanced the bill. If passed, it would require a prescription to access Plan B and other forms of birth control. It would also allow civil lawsuits against anyone who helps a woman get an abortion and create a state database to track who had the procedure. Opponents say the bill could make contraception inaccessible to many women and would violate the privacy of citizens. A Joplin family is currently without a home after a fire heavily damaged theirs yesterday afternoon. It happened just after 2 p.m. yesterday in the 2800 block of South Connecticut Avenue. Officials say everyone made it out safely, but the home is heavily damaged inside. A representative from the EPA is in Caney, Kansas this week to talk to residents about soil remediation and testing. The rep will be at the Caney Library on Wednesday and Thursday, answering questions from residents and signing them up to allow the agency to remove and replace contaminated soil on their properties. This is the second round of remediation in Caney. The EPA completed the first round, then changed its threshold for what is safe. Now they are trying to meet the new threshold. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is continuing to grow in popularity and can be found all across the web. KOAM's Samantha Walker sat down with an AI researcher to learn how this advancing technology could affect election season. So this is an actor. This is not Tom Cruise. Artificial intelligence is something you might use every day, from autocorrect to chatbots and image generators. 
but AI-generated images and videos, sometimes referred to as deepfakes, are raising concerns. Diana Fordham is an instructor at MSSU and researches AI. I say often, this genie is not going to be put back in the bottle. This is here to stay, and it's only going to get better. There are numerous free sites where users can generate an image with just a few clicks. But researchers say these tools can be dangerous during an election season. We are not prepared for what is going to happen on this election season. We have already seen, um, just an example, the one that came right to mind was that Joe Biden's voice was used as, on a robocall. Fordham says that while some AI products have cues that help you tell they were generated, the technology is advancing every day. She says it's important to fact check and research this election season. I question everything. I research everything and that's what I would propose that people do when they come across any article that they think could be misinformation. She said AI technology can have many uses, but to watch out for wrongdoers. This type of technology is used for good and evil. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Fordham says AI is not going away, so voters need to stay aware of its abilities for future elections. To learn more about AI, visit our website at koamnewsnow.com. And that's a look at this morning's top stories in weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOAM Morning News, Missouri Southern Baseball is picking up where it left off last spring. We'll have the details. Plus, people continue to lay flowers at the Solovetsky Stone in Moscow to honor the life of of Alexei Navalny. And we have another warm and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. Honda is as easy as one, two, three. Honda on virtually every vehicle. Your warranty lasts forever at Roper Honda. Missouri Southern Baseball is picking up where it left off last spring. The Lions entering yesterday at 10-2. and two. They've won eight in a row and are yet to lose while playing at Warner Turner Field in Joplin. University of Mary visiting Joplin to face the 14th ranked Lions. Bottom of the second. The game is tied up at one. So, Henry Kuziak rips a double down the left field line. Lions end up taking a 2-1 to one lead. So, we'll go to the next batter. Ethan Clark hammers a pitch to left center. Diving catch from you marry left fielder Michael Polson makes to prevent two more runs from scoring. Marauders hanging around. Third inning runners on the corners. They try a double steal. Safe at second and safe at home. You marry jumps back in front three to two. Bottom of the fourth, same score. Drew Townsend breathes life into the Lions. He hits his second home run of the season, tying the game at three. Next inning, Garrett Rice is going to smack a single into right center. That puts Southern up 4-3. to three. Lions hang on down the stretch. They score three in the seventh inning and win their eighth in a row, 7-4, to four, the final score. And it's the final week of the regular season for high school basketball in southeast Kansas. Pittsburgh Boys Hoops hasn't lost in the month of February. The Purple Dragons are winners of seven in a row. Pittsburgh Boys Hoops taking its seven-game winning streak on the road to Riverton. Three minutes left in the second quarter. The Purple Dragons are up by 10, so Mason English gets a steal. He finishes the layup in transition and gets fouled. Pittsburgh leads by 11 at half. Third quarter, Lock North connects on a corner three, trims the deficit back to a single digits. Purple Dragons never really sweat it, though. English gets two more off a dribble handoff inbounds play. Then he gets his teammates involved behind the back pass to Chase Hembry, leading to a point-blank finish. A little later, Jaden Brown catch and shoot. Three is pure. Back to that inbounds play. This time, English is going to find Nate Mitchell on the no-look pass. Purple Dragons run away with it 74-41 for their eighth consecutive win. And it was senior night last night for C.J. Bulldogs girls basketball as they take on the Web City Cardinals. Both teams coming off of tough losses last week. First quarter, Webb has possession. Kira Long gets it, and she sinks the floater for three, but that's as good as it got in the first half for them. 
Desi Williams now driving and she shimmies to get the layup. Bulldogs on an 11 point scoring run. Off a of CJ takeaway, Williams has it again and off the fast break, she knocks it off the glass for two. Bulldogs now have a 23 point lead. Web City not dead yet. Mallory Stanley, she takes the contact and she gets the bucket and the foul. Webb finds their footing. Bren Gilchrist now taking it. She knocks down the corner three. Lady Cardinals cut the lead down to 14. Late in the fourth, Whitley Keith turns it up. She gets it and nails another three-point shot for Webb. Now it's a four-point game, but within just a few seconds, Kylie Scott is going to get it off the turnover, and she drives and hits the backboard for two, and she gives her one more, finishing with 18 points, preventing Webb City's huge comeback attempt. CJ wins 53-42. Well, still to come, we're going to see why a new study says women benefit more from exercising than men. Plus, we'll have another check of that forecast when the KOM Morning News returns. Gear up for warmer weather during our March 16, 2024. It's easy to stay safe online. Learn more at sisa.gov forward slash secure our world. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 516 now on this Tuesday morning, taking a live look at our camera on the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. You can see some of the stars in the sky. We got a bit of a breeze. It's a chilly start, but not too bad right now. Murdoch camera 32nd and range line also looking pretty good as well. I believe it's a little out of focus, but that's all right. That just happens sometimes. Let's talk about our rain chances. Now we're going to go through today. We have a pretty decent day out there. We're going to be fairly mild for this time of year. And we'll start to see clouds increasing later as we go into the uh, afternoon, evening, and overnight hours. And we're looking at a mostly cloudy day for us on our Wednesday, but that does not stop temperatures from warming up across the area with a gusty south breeze out there. Then comes the change. This is where we start to see those showers and thunderstorms. So there's going to be a weak wave out to our west and a surface low expected to develop and that's going to trigger some showers and even some thunderstorms at or slightly after midnight a little further to the west. Now out west they have a strong cap in place and if you recall from previous storm seasons the cap is what stops thunderstorms from developing. They can't break through that. We will not have such a cap in place but we also are not going to have significant destabilization. So yes thunderstorms are going to be probable for some of us, as you can see, not everybody as we go overnight Thursday, and some of those could be strong, marginally severe, but they're not going to be widespread. We're not talking anything significant. Even the storms themselves won't bring significant uh, severe weather with them. We're talking some small hail at this point as the primary threat. So that's the good news. None of that has changed since yesterday. By 5 a.m., the last of the showers are out of here, and our Thursday is going to be a bit cooler. We'll see gradually gradual clearing, but thanks to that low, take a look. Our winds shift out in the north, and that what, that's what helps make us a little cooler as we go into our Thursday. So in terms of that severe threat, you can see it's been expanded a little. It's still the same low-end risk, and I know it's a little confusing because this is for Wednesday, and we're talking storms Thursday. The way that the Storm Prediction Center operates is day one lasts until, if I recall correctly, one or two o'clock in the morning the next day. I know it's confusing. Believe me, it took me a while to adapt to that odd situation. But because of that, this is really for overnight after midnight where we could see that low end risk for some strong, marginally severe storms with some small hail out there. So that's why that shows up on Wednesday, even though we're talking about early Thursday morning, because they think the way they do their time, day one continues two hours into the next day. That's just how they operate. In Joplin right now, though, 36, feels like 32 at the south breeze at 5 with clear skies. So again, it's a bit chilly. Around the region, we've got a good peppering of temperatures. We've got mid-upper 20s, and then we've got mid-upper 30s out there as well for some of us out there. So about a 10-degree spread on these temperatures across the area this morning. All of us warming up, though. Sunny skies initially, mid-50s by late morning. And as we head into the afternoon, again, our highs mid upper 60s out there 
Mostly clear skies for the majority of our day. We won't start to see clouds really start to increase until much later in the afternoon and early evening hours, and then those clouds will thicken up and we'll go mostly cloudy overnight, falling back into the upper 40s right around 50 and the winds will start to pick up tonight. They're going to start gusting around 20 miles an hour tomorrow. They'll be out of the south gusting about 25, ushering in some low 70s around the area. Again, a little cooler Thursday once the storms roll through and then the March like weather returns 60s, 70s heading into next week with some thunderstorm chances on Monday and some additional showers next Tuesday and Wednesday. And that does make us a little cooler, but puts us a little closer to average by the middle of next week. Let's check your forecast. We're back with Health Watch right after this. You are more than your car wreck. More than Aaron Sachs and Associates. Topping Health Watch this morning, everyone knows exercise is great for you, but bad news guys, women appear to benefit more. That's what one new study found, at least when it comes to heart disease. Researchers looked at more than 400,000 adults, 27 to 61 years old. They found women didn't have to work out as hard to reduce their risk at the same amount. Or another way to look at it, at the same level of exercise, women lowered their heart disease risk twice as much. Researchers also found it doesn't appear to matter how long you exercise, intensity of the workout is far more important. Another interesting finding is that setting goals and tracking activity doesn't appear to help stick to a program. What does is making it enjoyable by doing things like working out with a friend or joining a group. And a Maine family, heartbroken by their five-year-old son's medical diagnosis, was just surprised with a generous donation. Talia Clark met with the family and shares why and how this young boy was matched with a service dog. This is Easton. Hi, Easton. Hi. Hi. This is Banksy. He now belongs to five-year-old Easton Merrill in Yarmouth as his new service dog. Last year, Easton was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Um, it is no longer uh, the death sentence it was years ago. Um, he can live a fulfilled life, but it doesn't mean it's, it's easy. Easton wears technology to alert his parents when his glucose levels are too high or too low. Banksy provides an added layer of protection for Easton. It was a little bit trickier when I didn't have Banksy. <laughs> right now, I, I still have to sleep with Easton, and even though with all the technology, I'm still up two to three times a night, and we're doing corrective measures to keep him safe from those lows. Having a dog for earlier warning is just that confidence. Banksy comes from the organization Diabetes Dogs of America. He was trained for six months on Easton's smell and how to get help when Easton is not responsive. Banksy alerting Easton's parents within five minutes of their first time meeting each other. Good alerts. Good alerts. Well, they have been a little high because they did have pancakes for breakfast this morning. From now on, where Easton goes, so will Banksy including school and to bed. So if the dog wakes up, smells the blood sugar, we'll jump on the bed, we'll wake him up. We teach our dogs to actually physically jump on top of our client. So you have a, a 70 pound dog jumping on top of you. You will wake up, you will wake up and, and, and then the dog can actually hopefully maybe save your life. A service dog like Banksy costs nearly $30,000, a price tag not typically covered by insurance. Distant relatives had raised money to help donate Banksy to Easton. Now the Merrill family wants to pay it forward, raising thousands of dollars for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. They say they're so grateful for Banksy. Just knowing that he has this partner in crime. According to the Mayo Clinic, signs and symptoms of type 1 diabetes in children include increased thirst and frequent urination. Other symptoms may include extreme hunger, unintended weight loss, fatigue and blurred vision. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. And we are watching another beautiful day across the area. Nothing out there on the Skywatch Storm Tracker. We'll have another look at your forecast when we come back. Plus six years, no interest. But hurry, the extended President's Day Super Sale at Furniture Row ends soon. Right now at 5.30, the Chanute Public Library yesterday hosted a unique book club event. And we've got ourselves a chilly start to the day, but it's going to be warm. It's going to be sunny ahead of some changes in the forecast. Take a look at the forecast to get you out the door coming up. Plus, KOAM hosts another flag swap to help poor staters replace their American flags.
The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. The time now is 5.28 a.m. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. I'm Chris Warner. It is no longer Monday. It is Tuesday. We had a very successful flag swap yesterday. First right. one of 2024. Yeah, it looked um, like you guys are having a good time. Yeah, we'll have many more of those, of course, throughout the rest of this year. So make sure you uh, stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on when those are going to be. And today is going to be a great day. It's practically March already. Let's take a quick look outside. This is the uh, MoDOT camera at 32nd and range line looking back to the west and we're looking pretty good so far as we get the day started. But again, it is a bit chilly out there. Temperatures map will show us just how chilly it is. We have a wide range though of about uh, 10 degrees. We've got mid to upper 20s for some, low to mid 30s for others, and then mid upper 30s for the rest of us. So it is again about a 10 degree 10 15 degree spread of temperatures out there this morning, but all of us getting in on the warm action later today. Kids getting on the bus about 34, mostly clear skies, south breeze around 5 to 10 miles an hour. And when that bus brings them home, a few more clouds out there and right around 65 with a southwest breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Heading through today, the clouds will gradually increase as we head later into the afternoon and into the evening. As we go into the evening, they'll actually start to increase a little more rapidly, but we'll have a few clouds here and there through the day and into the early afternoon. That doesn't stop us, of course, from warming up. We're talking those highs mid upper 60s out there and we do have some rain change chances on the way. In fact, we have some thunderstorm chances on the way and we'll talk about all of that in your full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Caitlin. Thanks, Chris. Drury University in Springfield is joining the Southwest Baptist University and Mercy Partnership to offer more students a path to a nursing career. The program lets students receive non-clinical education at Drury. SPU will provide clinical instruction and Mercy will provide clinical opportunities. The partnership hopes to address nursing shortages in Missouri and nationwide. Mercy, you know, is a nationwide healthcare organization, and so this opens up those opportunities for our students from Southwest Missouri to to move into healthcare professions all over the country. Uh, and so the the sort of notion that Drury and SBU and Mercy pairing together on this program is is really exciting to all three of us. Jury students can now begin registration for the nursing program's 2024 fall semester. The Chinook Public Library yesterday hosted a unique boot club event. Normally everyone would read the same book and then discuss it, but this was a silent book club. People were encouraged to bring whatever book they wanted and read it by themselves, surrounded by other bookworms. Officials say it's a peaceful way to read while still socializing a bit. I love being able to figure out what book that will get them going again. You know, a lot of people have been talking about that they kind of have hit a slump, you know, during the pandemic and it's been really hard for them to get back into reading. And so finding that perfect book that gets them back into reading and get them excited about books and learning and all of that, uh, that's what brings me the most joy about being a librarian. There was also drinks and snacks available. The library plans to host a silent book club on the third Monday of every month. KOAM's Great American Flag Swap is back. Yesterday we held our first flag swap event of the year at the Roper Honda dealership in Joplin. Like always, folks were able to bring their old tattered flags and get them exchanged for a new one. We then take the old ones and have them properly disposed of. It actually helps rejuvenate uh, patriotism in our nation. Um, too often times I think we take the flag for granted and what it represents and I feel this was one great way to uh, just reignite that patriotism. The next flag swap will be on May 21st at Jake's Fireworks in Pittsburgh. And yesterday was President's Day, but how much do people in the four states actually know about our nation's leaders? KOAM's Anthony Saviello put four staters residential knowledge to the test. An extended weekend for kids in our area thanks to the federal holiday we have come to know as President's Day. Do you know why you're out of school today? Parents need to come sit. Close. Wrestling tournament? No. Do you know why you're not in school today? Today is President's Day. For kids, Monday may just be another day off school. 
But how much do they know about our nation's presidents? Very first president of the United States. Donald Trump? <laughs> now, President's Day falls on the third Monday of February every year. But do four staters know why it falls on that particular day? Maybe college students know a little better. Why do we celebrate President's Day on this day? Whose birthday does it fall on? I have no idea. George Washington? That is correct, okay, okay. yeah. Is that when the White House burned down? <laughs> no, that is not when the White House no. burned down. Surely they know the faces of the presidents carved into Mount Rushmore. Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. John F. Kennedy, yeah, JFK. No, no. that is not, no. no? Lincoln is up there, Jefferson, uh, Roosevelt, Teddy. Is Abe Lincoln up there? He is. Theodore Roosevelt. Correct, okay. that's three. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, come on! <laughs> Though many know that George Washington was the first president and Joe Biden is the current president, some fun facts we just don't realize. The fact that James Madison was the shortest and the fact that William Henry Harrison only spent 31 days in office sometimes go overlooked. But it's important to remember our nation's history and the leaders that carried us to where we are now. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Anthony Saviello, KOAM News. Some other fun facts you may not know about our presidents is that James Garfield was the first known left-handed president. By the way, I'm related to him and I am also left-handed. Fun fact right there. And Theodore Roosevelt was the youngest president to take office. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. We'll see a new video illustrating the latest front line in the southern border crisis. Plus, Ukrainian troops abandon a key stronghold over the weekend. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. Yeah. And associates committed to community service. Topping World Watch, we have new video illustrating the latest front line in the southern border crisis. Hundreds of Chinese nationals can be seen crossing the border from Mexico into Southern California, and they're not the only ones. Correspondent Bill Maloon has the latest from Hong Kong, ba, California. A stunning sight in Hakumba, California Monday afternoon as a long line of migrants from all around the world scales a steep, rocky mountain and crosses illegally into the United States. This remote area, an hour east of San Diego, now a cartel smuggling hotspot for global clients. Where are you guys from? Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan? Yeah, yeah. Kazakhstan? Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. Last night, groups of the migrants camped out along Interstate 8 after crossing illegally, setting fires to stay warm. There were no Border Patrol agents in sight. Where are you guys from? Turkey. Turkey. Turkey? Yeah. Yes. China. 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 What city in the U.S. do you want to go to? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. L.A.? Los Angeles. Okay. Over the weekend, hundreds of Chinese nationals crossed illegally into Hukumba, and the number of Chinese arriving is exploding. CBP sources tell Fox in the four and a half months since October 1st, more than 20,000 Chinese nationals have been encountered at the southern border. That's up more than 4,000 percent over all of fiscal year 2021, when only 450 Chinese were encountered. Fox's Griff Jenkins also encountered a group of men from Syria yesterday. Where are you from? Syria. Why are you coming to the U.S.? Because we, uh, we love America. Of course these countries that are enemies to us, that want to see our government fall, of course they're going to be sending people when they know that all we're going to do is release them into the country. And the politics of the California border are very different than those of the Texas border. Here in California, you're not going to see any razor wire, no shipping containers, no state troopers, no National Guard. California is a sanctuary state, and it's not doing anything to try to stop the illegal crossings here. The Eiffel Tower is currently closed to the public. Paris's beloved tourist attraction was forced to close its doors Monday after its workers went on strike. The one-day protest is reportedly over the way the monument is being managed financially. Union members say Paris's City Hall is underestimating the cost of work needed on the monument ahead of the Paris Olympic Games this summer and are demanding a financial review. 
The Eiffel Tower is one of the world's most visited monuments, welcoming almost 6 million visitors each year. And people continue to lay flowers at the Slavatsky Stone in Moscow to honor the life of Alexei Navalny, despite reports of people being detained after paying their respects. The French ambassador to Russia, Pierre Levy, paid his respects on Monday at the monument that has become a symbol of silenced voices under President Vladimir Putin. A prominent rights group is reporting more than 300 people have been detained while paying tribute to Navalny this past weekend. Russian prison officials reported Navalny died on Friday. His body is being held for at least 14 days as Russian authorities try to determine the cause of death. The death coming one month before a presidential election in Russia that is expected to give Russian President Vladimir Putin another six years in power. Ukrainian troops abandoned a key stronghold over the weekend following months of bombardment and dwindling supplies. As Madeleine Rivera reports from Washington, President Biden is continuing to push Congress to pass additional aid for Ukraine. Russian tanks roll into the city of Avdika in eastern Ukraine following a months-long onslaught from Russian forces. Ukraine's president says his troops are in need of more U.S. weapons and ammunition to prevent Russia from taking more territory. We are counting on this positive decision of the Congress. For us, this package is vital. A decision that currently resides in the House and could be weeks away. Lawmakers left town for a two-week break without voting on an aid package passed by the Senate last week, a decision blasted by President Biden. Two weeks? What are they thinking? My God, this is bizarre. And it's just reinforcing all the concern and, and, and almost, I won't say panic, but real concern about the United States being a reliable ally. House Speaker Mike Johnson dismissed the criticism and says he won't be pushed into voting on the more than $95 billion foreign aid package that includes money for Ukraine. Some Democrats, though, think Johnson is simply caving to outside pressure. As he's afraid they're going to kick him out as speaker unless he uses Democratic, uh, unless he goes with Democratic support. And in that case, he's going against Donald Trump. But there are a number of Republicans who still believe Congress will deliver on resupplying Ukraine and other key allies. And I do think that there is an opportunity when we get back to Washington to move this important aid package forward because it is so critical. And that's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dow. And remember, keep the chief in mind, carpetologist, that is. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News, 545 now on this Tuesday morning. we got some changes on the way. We're going to touch on that here in just a moment. Quick look outside. Our camera on the Cornell Complex in downtown Joplin looking pretty good so far. We've got clear skies, a little bit of a breeze, but nothing too wild out there, which is good news, of course. Modoc camera, 32nd in range line, looking back to the west. Folks getting their day started. Not a bad day at all out there. In fact, as we go through today, we are going to have another March like day. Temperatures mid upper 60s for most of us, so quite warm. And then clouds will begin to increase late this afternoon into the evening and overnight hours. And so will the winds. And we're going to go mostly cloudy and be breezy, but still very warm for our Wednesdays. We see a lot more low 70s across the area for us. And then late Wednesday, Technically, really early Thursday morning, we're going to see the possibility for a few thunderstorms. These are going to be isolated to widely scattered, but the ones that do form could be strong to low grade severe. So here we are at 1 a.m. and this is what we're talking about. We'll have those thunderstorm chances out there across the area. Now, the good news is at this point, nothing's really changed from yesterday. We're still looking at primarily just some small hail as the primary threat with these storms. Now they, of course, could be loud. There'll be lightning, there'll be thunder, and there'll be some heavy rain, but we're not looking at any significant severe weather out of this. And as we head toward 5 a.m. on Thursday, the last of those showers will be rolling out of here. Now, because of that and that system that's gonna be generating those storms, our winds are going to shift out of the north behind it, and that's going to keep us a little cooler. We're still going to be above average Thursday, but we are going to be a little cooler than where we have been the last few days and where we will be leading up to it. We discussed this earlier, but just a quick reminder. So Thursday, we have some isolated thunderstorm chances, and that's really for post thunderstorm chances in the morning. 
The weird way that uh, things work when the Storm Prediction Center puts out these risk levels for their day one, day two, etc. The day one or the day of runs until 2 a.m. the next day. So this risk is really for that after midnight period going into very early Thursday morning. You can see it's been expanded a bit and it lines up with about where that future track was showing the possible thunderstorm development out there. But again, the primary concern here is going to be some small hail. But of course, we'll continue to keep an eye on that as we get a little closer. Closer. Right now, Joplin 36 feels like 32 with a south breeze at 5 miles an hour, so it is a bit on the chilly side out there. Temperatures about a 10 to 15 degree range out there. We've got upper 20s, we've got low 30s, we've got upper 30s out there. So a chilly start, absolutely. Some of us a little closer to average than others, but all of us getting in on warmer weather later. So we're going to have sunny skies through the morning hours, mid 50s by 11. And as we head into the afternoon, temperatures above average, nice mid upper 60s out there, mostly clear skies for the majority of our day. And we'll start to see clouds slowly increase in the late afternoon, and then they'll really start to roll in late evening and overnight. Winds will pick up a bit too. We're going to fall back right around 50 degrees and winds will be out of the southwest gusting to 20. Those gusts increase to 25 tomorrow ushering in those warmer temperatures in the low 70s and then again low 60s Thursday so a little cooler out there we head into the weekend a fantastic weekend 60s 70s as we head into the start of next week more rain chances next Monday Tuesday and Wednesday and that does kick our temperatures down closer to average as we go into the middle of next week let's check your forecast we're back with more of the KOM morning news right after this A controversial bill was making its way through the Tennessee legislature this week. It wasn't about gun control or abortion. It was about ice cold beer. Chris Davis explains what the bill would do and why many lawmakers aren't warming up to the idea. By now, you've probably heard all about the bill involving ice cold beer that's gotten red, hot reaction. Decided it was really important to try to ban the sale of cold beer. That's right. It's a bill in the Tennessee legislature that would ban refrigerated beer from being sold in stores. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. Have a cold beer on me. It turns out even fellow lawmakers are a little cold to the idea. Well, next, <laughs> next there'll be outlawing hot coffee, I guess. Why do we make it so easy for the bad actors to have access to uh, alcohol? But for Representative Ron Gant, his desire for this bill is simple. Eliminate the temptation to drink and drive. If we know that it's illegal to drink and drive, why does it have to be cold? Why can't it be just a little bit of inconvenience to plan ahead? And if you want to stock your refrigerator with beer, by all means. He tells me he wants to be a voice for victims of drunk drivers because he was almost one himself. It's really hard to um, talk about and um, at some point I'll open up and talk more about it but I just I, I'm still dealing with that from a very emotional standpoint. Two years ago, Gant was hit head-on by a suspected drunk driver and nearly died. It shattered his hip so badly, he still walks with a cane. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's business. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's bottom line, but I am trying to save Tennesseans' lives. Now, after days of outrage, the cold beer bill is officially on ice. The sponsor says he wants to focus on other less controversial aspects of drunk driving. There's many other components in that bill as well. Tennessee House leaders seem optimistic lawmakers will warm up to some of Gant's other ideas. It sparks a conversation, I hope, and I think that's what Representative Gant would ask. Because no matter the temperature of your beer, Gant says there's no denying this cold, hard fact. We lost 300 lives last year, needlessly, that could have been prevented. Gant's bill would also cap the number of drinks someone could purchase at a bar if they don't have a sober ride home. It would also include doing a deep study into drunk driving statistics. We'll be right back. 
At Aaron Saxon Associates, we focus on the only thing that matters. all along. It's a million faces in a mirror, and everyone belongs. Join today. Find your why for a better us. NASA is putting up a Martians Wanted sign. The space agency is looking for volunteers to simulate a year-long mission to Mars, the Red Planet. You'd be part of the second of three ground-based missions called CHAPIA, or RU Health and Performance Exploration Analog. You'll live in a 3D printed habitat in Houston, simulating Mars challenges like spacewalks, crop growth, and tech failures. But you need a science, technology, engineering, or math doctorate and a thousand hours as a pilot. NASA says ideal candidates will also be non-smokers ages 30 to 55 years old. Tuesday, it's time to give your pets some extra affection. It's National Love Your Pet Day. From dogs to cats to reptiles and birds, we love our pets every day. But on this day, pamper them and reflect on the special place they hold in your life. Give them a special treat, play their favorite game, bring out their best toy, and be sure to give them some undivided attention. Take a closer look at their health and safety too. Make sure their vaccines are up to date and double check their ID tags. Don't have a pet? Shelter animals could really use some extra love. No matter how you choose to observe the day, make sure you post on social media using hashtag National Love Your Pet Day. And we've got a very spring-like day across the area. It's a little chilly this morning, but we will warm up into the mid-50s by 11 a.m. under sunny skies. We'll have a few clouds here and there. The majority of the, the first half of our Tuesday, rather, will be mostly clear. And we'll start to see clouds gradually increasing by late afternoon across the area. Highs mid-upper 60s out there. As we head into the evening, those clouds really start to increase. We're going to go mostly cloudy, mostly cloudy overnight, right around 50. And we could see those winds gusting out of the south southwest upwards of 20 miles an hour. Winds could gust up to 25 tomorrow, mostly cloudy, low 70s, well above average for us. Some morning thunderstorms on Thursday. Some of those could be strong, low grade severe with some small hail, so we'll keep an eye on it for you. It also makes us a bit cooler into the low 60s, still above average, but cooler than today and tomorrow. Then we'll start to warm up heading into the weekend, a beautiful weekend out there. Sunny skies, partly cloudy Sunday and 70. 70s Monday and Tuesday, some pop-up storms Monday showers Tuesday and Wednesday and that knocks our temperatures back down to about normal so a bit colder out there as we head toward the middle of next week. Let's check your forecast. We'll be back with more right after this. Rely on our years of experience at Bath Naylor and Crystal Funeral Homes.